This video is looking at trying to understand the temperature of a house and its behaviour and we're going to use a MATLAB app to support this understanding. And a reminder as ever that if you want more files and more general information please look at the website here where things are neatly organised. Introduction to house temperature then. So we're going to focus on the temperature of objects which are subject to heat supply and heat loss. Now this could be something like a domestic dwelling or it could be something like a heat exchanger, which are very common in industry and other similar systems. As befits an introductory course, we're going to use simple assumptions such as the heat loss is proportional to temperature difference. And we're going to assume that the item has uniform temperature throughout. So we're going to ask questions. How does the temperature depend upon the heat capacity, the insulation and other parameters? Let's look at a simple heating model then. We assume a heat capacity for the whole object of C, so that's going to be um, joules per degree. We're going to assume insulation such that the heat loss is given by K times the temperature difference, the temperature between the object and the external temperature. We're going to assume a heat supply WE, and therefore if you do a simple heat balance, you get this equation here, that C times the rate of change of temperature of time plus K times the temperature difference equals the heat supply. So core questions we might want to ask. How do we expect the temperature to depend on the insulation? So the insulation depends on this parameter K, the heat capacity, this parameter C, the heating, WE, external temperature, TE, and so forth. Do real simulations confirm what we expect? And we're going to use a MATLAB app to emulate a real simulation so you can get a feel for what's going on and later we'll confirm these expectations using some mathematical analysis. What are our baseline expectations then? So if you have two houses, one big and one small, and they both have the same heating and heat loss, what do you expect? Well, probably you would expect the temperature to be slower to change for the large house because it's going to have a much larger heat capacity and therefore it's going to need more heat, more time in order to heat up. So in other words, if you make C bigger, in other words, the house bigger, you're going to expect the time constant to be larger or slower. If you've got two houses with the same heat capacity, but one is well insulated, you can see this one on the right, it's got a scarf around it to indicate it's got very good insulation, but the other is not, what do you expect? Probably you expect heat loss to be greater without insulation, leading to a faster response and a lower internal temperature. So in other words, if K gets bigger, you expect a smaller time constant and lower steady state. So what we're going to do, we're going to check our expectations in simulation. And we're going to basically compare the impact of changes in things like insulation, heat capacity, and also a few other parameters. So let's bring the um, app over. Here it is, so you can see it. So we'll set the heat to be something uh, notional, say around 40. That will do. Um, you see at the moment we've got the heat capacity, which is this slider down here at 2. So let's run the simulation and see what happens. Okay, so you can see it's a relatively small house. You can see that from the pic picture and you can see it's gone up to a very hot 40 degrees. That's why this picture's gone red. Now, what happens if I make the thermal capacity a bit bigger? Let's go to four and run the simulation. You can see the house is bigger because the thermal capacity is bigger, but because the heat loss is the same, I've still got to 40 degrees, but I've got there slower. Let's make the heat capacity six. What happens now? You can see we've got a bigger house to represent a bigger heat capacity, but the steady state temperature is the same. But you can see from these plots in the bottom left, we're slower getting there. Let's go all the way up to 10. Okay, now we've got a very big object, but because the heat loss is the same, we're getting to the same steady state. We're just getting there much slower. So hopefully you're not that surprised about what we've seen there. So let's take the house down to something sensible, something around five, and let's um, refresh and start again. So now let's just investigate this parameter heat loss. So if the heat loss is very low, that means we've got very good insulation. 
So with really good insulation on this medium sized house, you can see we've got pretty hot. We've got up to 40 degrees. Now, let's make the insulation not quite so good. So we've got more heat loss. And what do you notice now? We're not getting as hot. Can you see the color of the house? It's a bit darker, a bit bluer, colder. We're not doing quite so well. Let's make the heat loss even bigger and go up to four. What do we see now? The house is not warming up hardly at all. You can see this yellow curve at the bottom. And what if we make the heat loss very, very big, up to 10? And what do you see now? Hardly any heating at all. Or in other words, all the heat that we're supplying is going straight out through the walls and very little is actually heating the house up. So hopefully those expectations are what you expected. Now, but let's also look at the time constant. What happened to the time constant as we increased um, the heat loss from 1, 2, 4, 10? Look, here's the time constants over here. Can you see the time constant got faster and faster and faster as you increased K? OK, let's take this K down to a sensible value, something like 4. And what else might we investigate? Well, what's the impact of initial temperature? At the moment, the initial temperature is not. So let's clean this and start again. At the moment, the initial temperature is at zero. And you can see we get to a steady state of 10 degrees. So 10 degrees hotter than the external temperature with our heat of 40. Our heat loss here is at um, 4 kilojoules per degree and so on. Um, what happens if the external temperature was colder? Let's make it minus 5. Now you can see we're only getting to five degrees. What if external temperature was minus 10? Well, the reason you can't see anything here is because we've started at zero degrees. We could always change this and say, let's start at minus 10, assume that we were as cold as the external temperature. And you can see we're only getting up to zero. So we're only increasing the temperature by 10 degrees. So the external temperature is a real factor here. Now, of course, what you do in practice is you say turn the heating on full, let's turn it up to 100 and at least now we're getting the room temperature up to something that's almost tolerable. Anyway, hopefully it's self-evident what you can do with these different parameters here. And you can play around and get a feel for how heating systems work. OK. What about backing up our observations from the simulation with some analysis? So here's the equation and you can see on the right hand side, I've put it into time constant form. So you can see the time constant is C over K. So it increases as you increase C and decreases as you increase K. Similarly, you can see the steady state is marked over here as TE plus one over K WE. So you can see the steady state depends on the external temperature. So it's relative to the external temperature and the difference to the external temperature is this term WE over K. And obviously, as K gets bigger, the difference gets smaller. Let's look at some wider applications. A heat exchanger. Now, a heat exchanger, they're very common in industry and they're designed to ensure that the flow of liquid is at a desirable temperature. So what you really want is the outlet from this heat exchanger to be at the correct temperature. So doing this very quickly, we'll assume the heat capacity or specific heat capacity of the fluid is Cp, a flow rate F, a density rho, and we'll find that the modelling of this is a bit like a mixing tank, but we are doing a heat balance. So we're going to do heat in minus heat out equals the rate of change of heat stored in the mixing tank. Now the heat flow in comes from the flow coming in, so it's Cp, T in, F rho, and the heat flowing out is due to the flow out. So there it is, Cp, T, F rho, and the heat supplied from the heater we're going to call W. And the rate of change of heat stored in the tank is here, Cp, V rho, dt, dt. So here's the final model. Now I've done that very quickly because that's not the main purpose of this video. Now that can be rearranged into time constant form. Here it is in the bottom right. So this next slide is the more important one. You can see what have I done? I'm going to compare the heat exchanger model, which is the one at the top, and the house temperature model, which is the one at the bottom. What can you see? You can see 
but the volume in the heat exchanger is analogous to the specific heat for the house temperature. So size matters. The volume of the tank, how big it is, is analogous to the size of the house. V is analogous to C, same position in the equation. You'll also notice that the flow rate of liquid through the heat exchanger is analogous to the insulation of the house. And hopefully that sort of makes sense. And you'll see the same if you look on the right hand side. Um, in terms of the heat supply, you'll see the flow comes in the denominator. We have a W over F for the heat exchanger and the heat loss coefficient. We have a WE over K for the house. So you can see those two parameters are analogous. And the final thing you'll see is the temperature of the flow in <coughs> for the heat exchanger is analogous to the external temperature for the house. So you see these two equations have very similar structures and therefore analogous behaviours. Some wider applications. What about a baby in the incubator? So we assume the baby is the thermal body, along with the incubator, whose temperature T is critical. C is the mass specific heat of the incubator and the baby. And we'll have an external temperature TV and a rate of heat transfer through the walls of the incubator. We'll assume this standard model is K T minus T E. Now, here heat is generated by the baby and a heater. So the model can be expressed like this. And what do you notice? This is almost identical to the house temperature model. The only difference is you have this plus B term. In other words, some additional heat is generated by the baby. Some conclusions then. We focused on the behaviour of thermal systems subject to a simple heat loss and constant heat supply. We briefly introduced mathematical modelling and we've introduced a MATLAB app that you can use to basically play around yourself and get an understanding for how these systems behave.